Hi guys, you're about to see a preview of my full course about improvisation, available exclusively on discoverdoublebase.com. Hi guys, uh, another approach to playing bass in a band and to using its sound to change the whole structure of the music is instead of thinking in terms of colors, harmonic color uh, with a bass under it, which is the which is generally the the approach we have, which is starting the harmony from the low and and making it grow in sophistication. There's a you can use your bass and use high note pedals. I mean by that, of course, take a very simple note and easy to reach one in the high range of the bass. For instance, the harmonic of the G here, and you can use that note and practice all the harmonic content you can build with this high G. So of course the first example is of course to play in G major, so... But practice being comfortable by having a pedal point and playing other harmonies using that pedal point. So the next step is play in A flat and imagining that this G is the uh, major seven, so A flat. And play it and get back to it and learn. Let's go to A. So you got multiple options here. Minor. Or of course seven with the sharp eleven as well with the augmented fifth as well then let's move on to the B flat which is so G is its sixth major sixth so a lot of the major options are very easy to reach. Of course, major, with all its possibilities. And don't hesitate to create little melodies using that focal point here. Let's move on to B, so B natural. High G with B natural under means it's a minor sixth, so it's a little bit a, a little bit more sensitive to use, but it could it could mean a B Aeolian. You could even play. Uh, you can even train yourself to hear the, uh, a more augmented mode here. So maybe a tone, a whole tone mode of, with the G here. And train yourself to really instant insist on that upper note pedal. Let's move on to, of course, with the C. It's very easy. Major. to minor, major 7, and let's now move to C sharp. So our G here is actually the augmented 11. our G the 11th mixolydian and let's move on to Dorian for example and let's go to E flat very easy it's the major third All the major scales from here and let's go to of course natural E, E natural, minor third, 
train yourself to hear a more sophisticated modes, like for instance Phrygian. Phrygian is not so easy. And let's go to F. So our G here is now the ninth. You have plenty of options with a natural ninth. And now, <coughs> flat nine, of course, it's a little bit trickier to use, probably Locrian or with an altered, an al altered uh, mode, like dominant. Mm. Don't hesitate to change a little bit the bass to give a little bit more movement. try to use that pedal point as the base of mini melodies and getting back to G minor with a major 7. So that's just one example with one note. You can, of course, it's very easy because it's a harmonic one so you can let it ring and experiment it, but it's just to showcase you that we generally view harmony and uh, chord color with a fixed bass. For instance, we'll have that big E and we'll say, okay, I want to hear Lydian, then I want to hear whatever, Phrygian, and you have always that, that constant bass. And that's a way to approach ear training and, and harmonic improvisation, but that's very nice to have constant notes or pedal points in the high parts and in the high register of the bass or of any other instrument. We might have an example, for, for example, we might have an example where the guitar is actually holding, maybe we could try something with two notes, so maybe we could try something with a, a high D and a high G, for example, some very easy pedal point, yeah. In this case, I'm going really for something minor, very easy to... Unfolding the Aeolian. Changing a little bit the chord tones, but I'm still in the same G Aeolian. Then progressively, while with exactly the same pedal points in the high, I can bring in that major sixth, will bring us the Dorian, or a lot more Dorian and maybe a little bluesier vibe. And from there you can go maybe to the melodic minor. Let's go to a more major feeling with these exact same notes. And minor exchange. And back. You can play with different bass. You can even... So, just get used to having some harmonic power with the bass. Often when we talk about substitu substitutions, when it comes uh, with, when, it, when we're talking about jazz chord and chord change, we really very often talk about adding color to the existing harmony. For instance, it's very basic, we alterate a, a chord on the dominant, we alterate the five or we probably put a, ma a major or seventh over the two chord in a 251. But it's nice to uh, as well see things from the bass perspective and keeping in mind that everybody's reading the same 
card changes. So you still have quite a lot of power, first by, saying, first by staying within the harmonic content. For instance, in a 2-5-1 in, in B flat, you'll use bases around the B flats that learn what their power is and what they imply as chord change. And once you're familiar with within a certain diatonic tonality with the different sound of the different degrees with the bass, you can start to exchange tonalities and create modulation. But once again, be very careful because as long as you as long as you stay in the in the tonality, you will not force other to play something else. What it will create is that what the other people will play will still sound in the good tonality, but the 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 points. The, it will have a different meaning because you're changing the bass under it. But as soon as you're changing the harmonic content, let's say on a 2-5-1, instead of playing basses in the B flat, uh, in the B flat tonality, you're changing that and you're playing more advanced and more, uh, you may be playing some substitutions yourself. In this case, you're kind of forcing the other people to play that as well. Whereas when we play the bass and they substitute, we can still play the, good, the bass and it sounds good. But when you substitute it strongly, getting out of the harmony, you force the other to change their language. So be very careful with that. So don't forget to practice this in all tonalities, all tempo, all kind of harmonic color. You really want to, to build yourself a harmonic vocabulary as a bass player. Uh, with that kind of bass reharmonization. It's as important as for a piano player or for a guitar player to know plenty of voicing for one color and to know really how to smoothly go from one to the other. So maybe we'll play a song here. Let's play Darn That Dream. We'll play a few bars of Darn That Dream in a very uh, classic fashion with the, with the chord as they are written. One, two, three, four. Maybe we'll slow down a little bit the tempo and, for instance, the first thing I'll, I'm going to do is what we all do very often is play a pedal point on the fifth degree of the first chord. So the first chord is G, I will start by D, D on the bass with G, very nice. Then the chord, the chord following is B flat minor and I will go on its third, so really use every possibility you have and major relative and minor relative are really a key thing when it comes to bass reharmonization because they are very easily interchangeable. They don't change the actual role of that note. And for instance, when you're playing a 2-5-1 in C, if you're playing F over the D minor, it will really change drastically the effect of it, but it will, won't affect mechanically the movement of preparing a tension with the subdominant, tension with the dominant, and resolution on the one. Let's just make that example clear. So let's play a 2-5-1 in C major, and I'll play F bass over the D minor, and eventually I'll even play the A, A bass under the C major. Maybe with a yeah, maybe with a more modal fashion so we can really hear the chords. One, two, three, four. Instead of. <laughs> so. Let's now get back to Darn That Dream and maybe play it a little, uh, a little slower. So here's Darn That Dream with a little slower version and a little bit more adventurous bass. One, two, three.
Thanks for watching the video and if you want to learn more from me, check out my course about improvisation on discoverdoublebase.com.